and welcome back to another insightful episode of Medicinaf's podcast series. I'm your host, Hetivi Shah, and today we're tackling a crucial yet often overlooked healthcare challenge, which is managing infectious disease in correctional facilities. These environments pose unique risks due to overcrowding, limited medical resources, and close contact among individuals. making disease prevention and control incredibly complex and to shed light on this crucial topic i'm thrilled to welcome back a familiar guest dr maria castel that the laws reads dr maria is a dedicated general physician and public health physician currently serving as a medical officer three with a strong uh, background in healthcare administration and mba and a masters in health management She brings a strategic and operational perspective to tackling public health challenges in high-risk environments. So, welcome back, Dr. Maria. It's such a pleasure to have you again on this platform. Uh, thank you. Um, I'm also glad to be included again in another episode discussing the public health perspective, especially in this um type of um facilities and setting. Yeah. Uh, so doctor to start with you know uh, correctional facilities often face challenges you know like overcrowding and limited healthcare resources uh, which can actually exacerbate the spread of infectious diseases so based on your experience what are the most pressing issues in managing infectious diseases within these uh, environments um the environment in correctional facilities for example in jails and prisons the congestion rate is really high and this is not just unique in um in our environment but also for other countries whether it was uh low middle income countries or whether these are developed countries so the congestion rate is really high sometimes it reaches into a uh, 300 to 400 percent so the most pressing issue can be categorized into two it can either be the external factors contributing to this infectious diseases um spread or the internal factors for external factors Of course this would be the limited amount of healthcare workers in this training um in this institution because for example not a lot of doctors or nurses are employed in institutions like correctional facilities. So in addition to that there are limited trainings offered to this um personnel so that's one of the factors. Another would be the financial and budget um budgetary constraints because um not all um um government institutions really provide that much of a budget for um our incarcerated population so there are really financial challenges in addition to that um the structure of healthcare is different in correctional institution like for example um some correctional institution they are handled under the minister of health when it comes to managing the health of the vulnerable population but sometimes it is under the department of corrections so this fragmented institution poses challenges in handling cases like infectious diseases. Um additionally of course the ventilation the structure of our jail facilities um there are not when ventilated so this poor healthcare infrastructure causes um the widespread um um infectious diseases. Uh, additionally um there is paucity in available data for our um incarcerated population. Um internal factors include that of health seeking behaviors of our population for example um a lot of our um PDLs are from um low social economic status so this factor is this social determinants of health poses um risk in the management of infectious diseases Yeah, I think that's really important perspective and I think different different of uh, uh, what do you call um the spectres also play a major role like what is the background and everything especially in limited resources yeah uh, so now yes. early detection of infectious diseases can significantly reduce transmission rates uh, so what screening strategies have proven most effective in correctional facilities and how can they be implemented given potential resource constraints Okay. Um, provided that um some correctional facilities have budgetary constraints, financial difficulties, one of the most important thing is to have a good screening strategy for infectious diseases. Like for example, um during entry of our PDLs, it is important to have um a thorough examination that includes um symptom surveillance for infectious diseases, and you also ask um 
um, a detailed medical history. For example, if the patient already um, is under treatment of tuberculosis, which is more most prevalent in close settings, so we have we need to have a detailed um, past medical history and screening strategies to be implemented during reentry in our facility, of course, as well as to exit to the community because. One of the important things in managing PDL health is managing them within the facility and of course reintegrating them back to the community for a continuous health care because they will be um, posing risk, for example, for infectious diseases, they will be posing risk to the community if they will not be managed well within our jail settings. So um, they can be implemented in resource constraints setting by having um, an effective strategy and lobbying for um, budgetary um, requirements. Like for example, if you see that um, TB is more prevalent in your um, in your jail setting, um, you need to align it to the um, to the guidelines um, given by the national um, health agency because you need to have a strengthened collaboration with um, national government agencies. For them to provide support to you in handling your patients because there's they, they may be in jail but they're also part of the community and they're, they're the vulnerable population yeah i think those are points are really important to consider right and it would be a challenging also for you if i'm not wrong yes um what poses so much challenge would be um you have to really lobby the needs of your population because because sometimes they are not um, programmed, so you have to be the ones that will push them to be included in in the um, in the discussion or narrative of healthcare system. Yeah, that's really important to consider, and it actually poses a significant challenge also. Uh, now, talking diseases like you know tuberculosis and COVID nineteen pose significant risks in the confined spaces of correctional uh, facilities. So, what measures can be taken to mitigate the spread of airborne diseases, airborne infections in such settings? So, for close setting with high congestion rate, it is important to have a medical isolation. So, we need to um, upon entry of our PDL, you have to screen them for infectious diseases, and when identified. You need to be medically isolated. So when they are medically isolated, you have to provide um, proper diagnostic procedures and of course, um, rigid testing and treatment. So you have to follow up the treatment all throughout the uh, disease, um, disease period. And then thereafter, you have to provide them with enough nutrition, um, other resources like the medical isolation facility needs to be well ventilated. It needs to have um trained healthcare professional who will be um looking after them during the duration that they're isolated so other ways to mitigate urban infection of course is to ensure that what that your um jail management not just all the healthcare professionals but all the jail management healthcare non-healthcare related they need to be part of the um they need to be part of the treatment of your pdl because mm -hmm. If they're not part of the treatment protocol for your PDL, there will be um risk of them uh, being infected. There will be risk of um um of treatment being stopped. So they need to be well educated on how to manage our PDL because managing public health inside the facility is not just a job of our healthcare professionals. No, everyone needs to be part of the healthcare management team. Additionally. Um, it also to have it's also significant to have educational programs. This is important to destigmatize infectious diseases like COVID nineteen, like um other um tuberculosis. You need to destigmatize um these diseases to um engage both your um healthcare team as well as your um um as well as the prisoners or the PDL. I think yes, I think holistic approach is something that is a uh really necessary for these facilities. So on that similar note, only my next question is about collaboration. So collaboration between correctional health and public health departments can enhance the uh, disease control effects. So how can these partnerships be strengthened to improve health outcomes for incarcerated populations? The strength and collaboration with national government agencies, as well as with the uh, national health authorities, like for example, your Department of Health, your Ministry of Health, 
it will really help not just in the management of your patient, but also in the diagnosis of your patient and in the whole public health surveillance. Like for example, if you have collaboration with your um, surveillance um, bureau from your Ministry of Health, you can really identify if there are outbreaks inside your jail facilities or if there will be uh, needed um, vaccination programs because a lot of the funding requirements or the management of your patients would really rely on the um, a more um, a higher institution like your government. So you need to strengthen that collaboration to ensure that um, when you reintegrate back your PDLs to the community, uh, there will be continuous of care. Because after you go back to the community, after they go back to the community, the management of health will rely on our um, health departments in each local setting. So that would not be the responsibility, for example, of the correctional facility. But it needs to be um, a continuous care. So you need to have that strength of collaboration to ensure that the treatment of your patient will not be hampered. And that will be, um, of course, impose risk to your population outside. So you need to have that strength and collaboration with them. Yeah, that's such a valuable insight, Doctor. And uh, once again, it's been an absolute pleasure having you on the podcast today. Your expertise and actually first-hand experience to really bring depth to this conversation. So thank you so much for sharing that with us. Yes, I'm really also grateful that um, this platform can um, can be used for everyone to be aware of the situations of our correctional facilities because, you know, they are the vulnerable population that are sometimes not discussed in the public health setting. Yeah, actually, and it's so, so much unspoken, especially correctional health is something that is so neglected and unspoken about, but yes, because of the vulnerability. So it's really interesting to hear your thoughts on this. And dear listener, thank you for tuning into this episode. And remember, if you're a healthcare professional who is eager to delve deeper into medical topics or have questions, do not hesitate to join us on the Medicine Apps platform. Medicine Apps platform is not just a resource. It's a dynamic space where you can connect with your medical peers, participate in meaningful discussions and contribute to the ongoing evolution of healthcare. So until next time, stay informed and stay healthy.